Now it's time for another Board Game Brawl preview with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey now, my name is Nick, this is Board Game Brawl, and today we're taking a look at a game that is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. That game is called Cuisine a la Carte, and it's from the company In Motion. Now I would encourage you to go to the official Kickstarter page to find out more information after you've watched this video. I'm going to have a link at the bottom of your screen and then down in the description section of the video. That will take you to the project page. You can find out more information and hopefully consider backing the project. Now what is Cuisine a la Carte? Well, it's a deck building game, but a deck building game with a theme that you don't really see in many other deck building games. You are in a cooking contest. You are trying to put together a fine cuisine to submit to a judge and hopefully get their approval and therefore win a lot of awards in the form of victory points. You're, the whole deck is made out of different ingredients that you're trying to get and you uh, as in typical deck building games, you're starting off with a weaker deck and trying of just spoons and salt and then trying to build up, get better ingredients, put together a cuisine that matches each other and complements each other well, submit it, and hopefully be the best chef possible. Let's go ahead and take a brief look at how the game is going to play, then we're going to come back and I'll let you know my final thoughts. All right, so this is one way to set up cuisine a la carte. You're gonna have your main ingredient deck of which you're gonna shuffle it up, put out four random ingredients from the lineup in a row. You're always gonna have forks that are available to purchase. You're also gonna have three random judges from the stack of judges that you'll put out. Then each player is gonna get a tip sheet and their own starting deck. Their starting deck is gonna consist of finishing salt and tasting spoons. That is to say two finishing salts and eight tasting spoons. And then play can proceed. Now the goal of this game is to get more victory points, which in this case are medals, which are given to you by the judges. There's medals indicated on the different judges' cards. As soon as someone meets a certain threshold of medals, so for instance in a two-player game it's 15 medals, that player immediately wins the game. So it's a bit of a race to build, uh, make your dishes not only as good as possible, but as quickly as possible and get to the judges and get those points before your opponents can. Now really quickly, in case you're not familiar with deck building games, the way a deck building game works is that every player is going to start off with the same inferior deck of starting cards. Your goal is to purchase new cards to put into your discard pile by using those starting cards that you have. And then eventually when you run out of starting cards to draw, you're going to have to reach off your discard pile into your deck. And now you're going to draw some of those new and better cards that you've been purchasing the whole time and maybe even hopefully getting rid of those starting cards, culling the weak ones out so that you can just keep drawing the better awesome cards that you've been purchasing this whole time. So before I tell you what all the different types of cards do and how they interact with each other, let me just go through the, uh, the basic turn structure of how every player's turn is going to go. First thing you do is you draw five cards from your deck. That's going to form your starting hand. Then you have the option of playing cards into your warming tray. The warming tray is very simply just going to be up to three cards that you have face down in front of you. You can play ingredients here with the hope of being able to play them when you submit your cuisine to one of the judges. I'll get back to what that all means in a moment. But for now, just know that you can have up to three cards there. Next, you have two choices. One is that you can buy cards from the marketplace. Now, typically you can only buy one card from the marketplace. And what you're looking for here are these little spoon symbols up in the top of all these different ingredient cards. Those will tell you how many of your starting card um, tasting spoons that you need to use in order to buy this card. Although some of the better cards are going to require that you use forks in order to do that, which is something else that you are always able to purchase. Now, I said that typically you can only have one purchase, but if you actually have fork cards, which cost you two spoons, from a previous turn, you can use them either as a fork currency or as an additional buy on your turn. So discard one of those and you're, or just use it and you're able to actually make another purchase on your turn, assuming that you actually have the currency for it. Now, instead of buying, you can submit your cuisine to one of the judges. A cuisine uh, submission is going to be any cards that you had previously placed into your warming tray, plus any cards in your hand that you want to use in order to make your presentation to the judge. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these judges. There's a lot of them, but I'll just show you a few. Here you have Paleo Pete, and the important things you're looking for here, uh, first, up at the top, it's going to tell you uh, restrictions, the types of uh, cuisines that he simply does not want. And then at the top, these uh, little chef hats here tell you 
how many food points it's going to require in order to make a, uh, that the cuisine has to consist of in order to be able to please him. So here you need 21 food points and he doesn't want any kind of breads or pastries. Uh, down here underneath this picture is going to tell you how many medals you get for successfully appealing to him and uh, successfully submitting a cuisine to him and the bonus medals you get uh, on uh, for the different types of cuisine you have. By the way, on the tip sheet, it'll show you a little handy guide as to what all these different types of symbols mean uh, and what they're called. So that one there very simply is protein. So he's gonna give you bonus medals if you have uh, given him enough protein. At the bottom of the card is an always on ability that occurs once you have actually um, submitted your cuisine successfully and put him in front of you. In fact, when you put this, when you successfully appeal to this judge, you're gonna take the judge card and every card that you use uh, every ingredient that you use in order to uh, submit a cuisine to him and put them off to the side. And from then on, you're always going to uh, have access to that ability. And those cards are permanently out of the, your deck and out of the game. So just to take a look at a couple of the other judges. You have Princess Priscilla here who wants sweets and she'll give you bonus medals here uh, for the heart. So she wants, she only accepts sweets, and if it's tart, then she'll also give you bonus medals as well. And then she'll reduce the meal cost uh, required to submit a dish to judges after you've already purchased her. Then you have little Leonardo who wants uh, spicy things. They'll give you two medals, and notice that the cost is different for these as well. Uh, less cost means less medals, but you might have a decent ability as well. Like for instance here, it says you may buy from the top three cards in the fridge, which I actually haven't covered quite yet so and then when you buy one of the judges you'll be able to put a new judge out for the next player now what i meant by the fridge was that at the end of a player's turn uh after they have gone through buying a card or submitting to the judge and then getting rid of whatever cards are left in their hand then they're going to clean up the marketplace that means you're going to take whatever card is furthest along the uh, ingredient track and you're going to discard it into the fridge and then move these down and replace it until you have four more cards out into the lineup cards in the fridge um, so long as they're on the top of the stack they can be purchased by other players and in fact now they're at a discount because they've been sitting around for a while regardless of what the cost is normally on their card whether it's a bunch of spoons one spoon or forks it is now one spoon that's it one spoon will get you the top card in the stack so if it's if you wait long enough you'll get a card for a good price assuming one of your opponents doesn't snatch it up first so let me show you the actual cards that come in the game, just to give you an idea of what you'll be working with here. Here are your starting cards. You have Finishing Salt, which only gives you two points to use towards submitting a cuisine, and then that's it. So it's really not a great card. If you can get rid of it, that's great, although it could help you uh, submit and when you submit to a judge. Then you have the Tasting Spoons, one of the basic cards, which is very simply giving you one spoon with which to possibly purchase something from the marketplace. Here's some of the other cards that you'll find in the ingredient deck. First, you have uh, these little spices and extracts that are gonna help you with your cuisines. So first off, when you're breaking this down, here's the cost up in the corner, and then here is the, uh, the food points that it's worth on its own. Now, over on the side here, it will show both the food points that it's worth plus the conditional food points, which it will explain down here. Uh, so for instance, if you use this, whenever there's uh, an ability in a colored text box that occurs when you're submitting for a cuisine. So this one says you get plus three points uh, with these with spicy or sweet uh, cuisines that you're submitting. So that'll give you three points right away. Uh, then here's another example of that here's sugar. This one's going to give you um, plus three if it's with uh, one of these aromatic cuisines. Uh, then here's some of the Western cuisines, you have a pomegranate, which is going to get you uh, only two points normally, but if it's part of, if at least one other card that you have played is a Western cuisine, you're going to get four extra hats. That's how these uh, for these colors work. You do at least have that type of cuisine, one card of that cuisine already played. The lobster is a whopping six points normally, and when he is revealed uh, from your uh, warming tray, when it, or when you reveal him during when you're submitting a cuisine, whether he's on your warming tray or your hand, you can also discard cards from your hand and get an additional point per card that was discarded this way. So that can be really powerful. And by the way, you can still play him during a normal turn without putting him into your warming tray or submitting him. Instead, and when you do so, you just get to draw two cards. A croissant is going to get you a spoon and normally gets you three points when it's part of um, 
of uh, French cuisine, then you get to discard a card from the top of your opponent's deck. And if it's a cheese, you get three more food points. This all happens when you're submitting, by the way. Uh, then you have artichoke. You can scrap a card from hand, which means get rid of it in order to, and you get a fork. And if it's French cuisine, opponent randomly discards one card from the warming tray. Here's lemon. I'm not going to go through every detail of all of these, but just to give you an example, there's lemon, parmesan. See, there's different types of cards. Bok choy will let you trash a card from your hand. And shiitake, which gives you a fork and then can be worth a lot of points if you use it as part of an Asian cuisine. So that's generally the game. You're going to try to build up your deck and get better and better ingredients. And then eventually use the cards that you have in hand and the cards that you put into your warming tray when you think you're ready in order to submit to one of the judges. Hopefully you get enough points to do so and have the types of food that they like and get as many medals as possible. Every time you take a judge, you keep track of the medals you have. When you meet the number of points required for the number of players that you have, you will immediately win the game. That is Cuisine a la Card. Now, let's get to my final thoughts. Anybody who knows my channel knows that I have a soft spot for deck building games, but also games that have a great theme that ties directly to the mechanisms. And I think that Cuisine a la Card really nails it on both of these regards. First off, you have sort of your standard deck building in some senses because you've got the Ascension style rotating lineup and you have your starting deck of weaker cards that you want to get rid of. But after that basic stuff, it goes straight into the theme where you have all these different innovative elements like the warming tray and like uh, having the fridge aspect. And there's just some things that seem like they could fit into any other deck building game, but they work really well here when you consider what the theme is and how you're, what you're actually doing there gathering all these ingredients, putting them together, trying to match up your cuisine, and then appealing to judges that have their own likes and dislikes and things that they're really going to appreciate and reward you for. It really gives the game a different feel that I haven't encountered from not only any deck building game, but really not a lot of games in general. There are other cooking games, but they're either larger scale Euro games or they're games that uh, are just sort of simple card games with a kind of pasted on theme. And Cuisine a la Carte is definitely not that. It really isn't like anything else that I've played before. And I think that it's going to appeal to a lot of people because while the mechanisms are relatively simple, anyone can jump into it very quickly, there is enough meat there for people who love these sort of engine building, deck building games. And when you tie that together with a the theme, it's going to, which is very accessible to a ton of people, it's just going to make you know the game rise to that next level and have more people pay attention to it because now it's a game that everyone can play, everyone can appreciate the theme of, but also uh, gamerly gamers, as I like to call them, can actually dig into it as well. There's a lot of interesting things that the game does as far as the two different types of currency, the forks and the spoons, and um, how you actually can kick off those different types of bonuses from the cuisines, the different types of ingredients you can go after, and how you plan to do so. Do you try and save up and get the most points possible to get the best judge possible, or just go for the weaker judges, the uh, quote unquote weaker judges who give you less medals? There's all these different avenues of strategy here for people to really dig into. And so I think it's going to appeal to a lot of people. And if you're one of those people, the Kickstarter campaign is ongoing right now. You can go to the link at the bottom of your screen and then down in the description section of the video that will take you to the official project page for Cuisine a la, uh, a la Card. And then hopefully you'll consider backing the project. That is Cuisine a la Card from the company In Motion. My name is Nick, this has been Board Game Brawl, and I'm reminding you to get out there and game every day and in every way. Take care. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.